Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Ventiva Breakfast Meeting. As usual, in today's session, we'll be having a rundown of um, fixed income as well as equity markets across um, equities across West Africa. And also, as usual, we'll be um, rounding up with from our media partners at Ventiva Africa Reports um, with headlines from with headlines across Africa. But before we start, we'd like everyone to know that this session is being streamed live on Facebook on our Vetiva online Facebook page. It's also being recorded and you may um, and it may be shared with third parties. Also, in terms of questions during the course of the session, you can send your questions in using any of the um, of the comment functions. <clears throat> and at the end of the session, when we have the Q&A segment, um, you may raise a hand or use the raise hand function and we'll be able to unmute you to ask your question or drop a comment. Very quickly, we'll be starting with um, Shion from our Global Equities Desk who will cover some um, West African equity markets. Good morning, Shion. Good morning, Chima, and um, good morning to all our listeners. Um, for a roundup of um, markets across West Africa, equities market across West Africa, we start off in Ghana. Um, where the index ended um, yesterday's session lower, um, shedding 11 basis points. Um, we saw a mixed um, activity level um, in the session um, with volume trading declining um, 48%, while turnover improved um, by 63% in that session. Um, improvement in turnover was largely on the back of um, the over 458,000 unit of um, GCB bank um, shares being traded um, on the day. So that um, pushed the turnover up by about 63%. Um, also, the, the session saw some more listed um, companies um, traded on the day. Um, we saw, um, I think, about 11 companies traded compared to about five or six we normally see on the day. Um, we saw three gainers and just the one loser um, in the session um, to close for a positive market breadth. Um, the likes of Unilever, Unilever Ghana um, was the highest um, gainer on the day. We saw it's 847 basis point appreciation in the share price of um, Unilever Ghana. Um, this was followed closely by Total Petroleum as well as um, Enterprise Group. Um, I remember yesterday we mentioned that um, investors will, we see investors um, continue to demand for the shares of enterprise group. And so this is what happened in yesterday's session. Um, however, um, the loss of 16, over 16% 16 in EcoBank um, countered this gain that was recorded in these other stocks, in the other three stocks that was mentioned. Um, so this um, pushed down the the composite index uh, to eleven negative eleven basis point return. Lower today return in the Ghana stock exchange um, still remains LD, and this stands at thirty six point zero nine percent um year to um year to date. So going into today, we expect to see similar negative flows, barring any, any change in sentiment, as we believe investors will continue to adopt a conservative stand, stand to the market. So we'll also continue to watch this closely and we'll bring this um, any update to our listeners in subsequent sessions. So like quickly, we'll move to the BRVM. Um, Last session, in the last session, the, the the composite index ended in the green. We saw the benchmark index inching up to 26 basis points to improve um, to improve the year to day return to 10.7 percent. So we saw a 26 basis point increase yesterday. Um, what we noticed was that it was a generally positive session. We saw turnover improving by about 67%, just in line with uh, the Ghana Stock Exchange, where the turnover improved 63%. Um, while we had them, um, we also saw 15 gainers, 
ahead of um, just 13 laggards in the in that market. Names like um, El Liquid, Sud Cote d'Ivoire, all lifted the um, market with impressive um, with impressive close as investors continue to take profit on names that has gained significantly earlier in the month. Um, names that I think we've mentioned continuously earlier in the month, names like CFA, Moto, and Safka. Um, but now we've seen investors taking profit on those names and that's where we're seeing some level of um, negative close in those names. Sectoral performance were all positive in the session as well. So that's, that's like a positive for the market, looking at um, sectoral performance. Anyway, so going into today, we expect another positive close as the market continues to react to positive sentiment while positive um, investor sentiment. While we expect uh, names like um, so the Côte d'Ivoire as well as um, El Liquid to continue to drive to drive this market upward. Um, and like we've always mentioned for us, any of our listeners and investors looking at any, some sort of exposure into these two markets, um, kindly reach out to us at um, dealing at vetiva.com and also to the sales team at um, sales at vetiva.com and we will be able to assist you with the exposure you're looking at. So lastly, we will we'll look at our local markets in Nigeria. Um, the all share index ended the session significantly lower um, ye yesterday, which was on the back of a 10% decline in the share price of Airtel in Airtel Africa um, due, due to the market um, capitalization of, of Airtel, the downward close dragged the entire index lower. Well, I think for I think the Airtel trade up on just um close to the close to the end of the session. And prior to that, the uh, market was just slightly um lower, but with the loss we saw with 10% loss we saw in Etel, this um, pulled the market significantly lower to um to close at hundred and it to close under than it one basis point lower. Um Bois Cement and Zenith Bank um though to a lower extent also contributed to, to the loss we saw in the session. Um, the loss has further worsened the year-to-day return of the share index or the Nigerian share index and um, the market is now negative 6.02% um, year-to-date. Um, we saw improvement in the consumer goods and um, oil and gas sector um, as gains in Nigerian breweries and um, Wando saw that rubbing off on this sector for a positive um, close in yesterday's session. Market activity level also improved as turnover grew 55% to around 2.7 billion. And this is just in line with our expectation, just like we mentioned in uh, the previous session. We expect activity level to remain at this, um, at this ele slightly elevated level in today's, um, in today's session. So, but generally for our expectation, um, for our expectation, expectation today, with, um, we, see, we believe with market sentiment looking to have retreated into the negative territory, we see the improved activity level, which is more broad-based now as a, as a pointer to some level of renewed interest in the, in the market. So we expect market to trade mixed, um, today, though with um, some bias towards a, a positive close. So that'll be it for the equities market across West Africa. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much Sean, for that analysis. Next up, we'll be hearing from Omarigi on fixed income and currencies in Nigeria. Good morning, Omarigi. Good morning, Chima. Good morning, everybody. I'll be taking the update for the Nigerian fixed income activities for yesterday. I'll start with the money market. The money market opened about 11 billion positive yesterday after we adjusted for repos and OMO repayments of about 15 billion that came in yesterday. Market was about 75.34 billion negative. This was a significant decline from opening figures that was recorded on Monday, which was about 103.29 billion positive. As a result of the drop in system liquidity yesterday, 
interbank rate tightening by over 25 basis points to trade around 18.75% levels. From the 18.5% levels recorded on Monday, we believe that the money market will trade at similar levels today, barring any significant change to system liquidity. Moving on to the FS market, the parallel market remained stable yesterday to trade around 500 naira to a dollar, while the annual window trade at a high of 420.88 naira to a dollar, closing at 410 naira to a dollar. That is a 167 cobo appreciation from where it closed on Monday. And this was largely spurred by the significant increase in an industry turnover yesterday, as it increased by 79.54% to close at $169.07 million from the $94.17 million recorded on Monday. Our outlook for the NERA remains the same. We believe it will, it will continue to over around these levels, barring any significant change to dollar liquidity in the system. Moving on to the TBS market, the Treasury biz market recorded another look on trading session yesterday with buy side interest seen on the long end of the NTB benchmark curve especially on the May 2022 and June 2022 papers. The May 26, 2022 paper was offered between 8.8% and 9% levels, but the bids on that end were extremely high. As a result, few trades were consummated on that end. We also saw some trades consummated on the newly issued um, special NTBs. Overall, average benchmark rate closed flat day on day. In the almost segment, it was the same story. We recorded weak activity in the almost segment also. We saw offers along the mid to long end of the curve. Bids on that end were also very weak, especially on the April 19, 2022 paper. Trades that were largely traded on the almost segment were executed on the February 22 and the July 22 papers. Overall, average benchmark remained unchanged at 9.24%. Our expectation for today is that the TB's market will trade on a quiet note as attention shifts to the bond auction that is happening today. I'll conclude with the Nigerian bonds market. It's still the same story. The market is still trading on a very quiet note as players gear up for the bond auction that is happening today. Yesterday, nothing significant really happened. We saw mis-sentiment across the benchmark curve as a lot of players decided to stay on the sidelines and wait on the outcome of the monthly bond auction that is happening today, uh, while some decided to create strategic positions ahead of today's auction. We saw bids improve across the mid to across the mid to long end of the benchmark curve, especially on the 2034s, 2036 and the 2037 maturities. Why offers improved on the 2045 maturities from the 13% levels that we are seeing on Monday to trade at 13.15% um, levels. Overall average benchmark rate declined marginally by three basis points to close at 12.89%. At the bond auction today, the DMO is offering between 150 billion to 180 billion across 2027, 2035 and the 2045 maturity. Our rate projection for the 2027 maturity is that the marginal rate will fall between 12.5% to 13%. While our rate projection for the 2035 maturity is that the marginal rate will fall between 12.85% to 13.5%. While the 2045 maturity we expect it to close between 13% to 14%. Our outlook for today is that the market will trade on a very quiet note as market participants await the results of the monthly bond PMA auction. That is all for Fist Income. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Amari. Again, we'll now round up with our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports. Good morning, Temple. Good morning, all. Thank you so much, uh, Chimba. Uh, so we know that the World Bank and the African Union had a meeting a couple of days ago and the press statement came out, out of that meeting yesterday saying that um, the World Bank and AU are partnering to 
help make vaccines available to over 400 million Africans, which is a major goal that the AU had uh, set for themselves uh, earlier in the year. And so the, that 400 million Africans is around some 60% of the continent's population, the vaccination targets that they have for the year 2022. So at the end of the meeting, they announced the, uh, the partnership. Uh, which will complement the COVAX, COVID-19 Vaccines Global Access Program, which is a major uh, directive or program of the of Gavi. And then um, it is also something that will help support the Africa Vaccine Acquisition Task Team uh, initiative. Then um, in Mozambique, which is still in the southern part of Africa, uh, Mozambique is selling a majority stake in its um, hydropower, $4.4 billion hydropower dam, uh, basically to help them raise some funding. They've already laid out the structure for that uh, uh, facility. And it's, we understand that they will be announcing bids, uh, but it will take some four months or thereabouts to announce the outcome. And then it's going to take another couple of months for uh, some other processes basically to be actualized. We know that Morocco's uh, inflation is up 0.3% for the month of May, and that's due to higher food and non-food prices. Um, Bank to Cairo is also launching an e-payment firm by the fourth quarter of the year. In Togo, the AMEA power uh, has just launched a 50 megawatt solar power plant program. It's a photovoltaic plant, and that we understand is the first utility scale renewable energy project backed by an IPP, independent power producer in that country. Uh, of course, still with power, but this time in Nigeria, Egmi Power is looking to raise $1.8 billion to expand its outputs. We understand that that is to basically help them double their generation capacity for outputs and, of course, to export electricity to other West African countries. And they seek the, the combination of uh, both Death, debt and equity to meet the funding requirements ahead of their uh, construction work, which has been scheduled for the second quarter of next year. Then um, in the eastern part of Africa, we stay with Kenya mainly, where they've just unveiled some 85 million uh, shillings coffee factory in Baringo County. And this is a deal uh, between the Baringo County and uh, a Korean company. The Korean company has uh, contributed some 70 million Kenyan shillings, while the county on its part contributed some 15 million uh, Kenyan shillings. Then uh, basically that will help them to uh, come up with that factory uh, in the medium to long term. Kenya Bankers Association, and of course, uh, collaboration with FSD Kenya and Kenya Climate Innovation Center have also just uh, launched a blended finance program for SMEs, uh, basically targets um, a risk tolerance and flexible sort of uh, programs among SMEs that are engaged in sustainable developments. And that's basically to help uh, create some kind of climate action, climate change action uh, in that uh, region or in that plan. These are some of the headlines we've got to share with you this morning. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Temple, for sharing those headlines with us. We are now at the Q&A segment of the session. If you have any questions, you may use the raise hand function and we'll call upon you to speak. We have a question here from BC Sander and he's asking, this is to the FI team, how much Eurobond is the debt management planning and how soon are they raising it? Okay, thank you. Um, so the DMO is planning to raise about $3 billion in Eurobonds. I think they have room for about $6 billion thereabouts, but um, from the last conversations, um, estimations we're looking at about three billion as the timing of when they would be raising the funds um, we're looking sometimes say q3 um, in between q3 or early into q4 but we we believe that q3 i mean from 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 the last you know um, whispers we we got basically so that's that's the um, update on that thank you 
Thank you very much. If there are any other questions, please use the raise hand function or send them in using the comment sections. Okay, so a question for the fixed income team again. Uh, I know that Omar again mentioned um, system liquidity at the beginning of his presentation and how um, it was currently negative. So we know that it has been um, fluctuating between the negative and positive territory for a while now, mostly negative. Um, so could you clarify um, what this means? Um, and your outlook for the for system liquidity going forward, do you expect it to get stable anytime soon? Okay, thank you once again. So again, system liquidity, like you rightly mentioned, and as we've always noted, has been fluctuating between um, positive and negative in recent times. And this is, again, one of the many strategies of the CBN to keep the system tight um, for two reasons, uh, to take care of inflation on one hand, and on the second hand to, um, as part of currency control measures, um, again, demand and supply economics playing out here. Also, when you look at it, um, a huge chunk of OMO of CBN cost was on OMO funding for the last, you know, um, three, four, five years thereabout. And at the time the CBN unwound OMO holdings and from local investors last year was part of efforts to um, reduce their cost. And you've seen basically in recent times, our maturities are very, very minimal compared to the very huge figures we used to have in the last three, four years. Uh, again, that's some cost saving for the CBN and they found a new way to, you know, sort of take more money out of the system and um, still continue to try and achieve their objectives. Now, this is not so great for for um, to an extent, it might not be so great for the banks because it means they are constantly looking for how to um, raise funds to meet liquidity needs. And, and um, that, that, that's why we could have heard or read about things on rates and in the banking se sector and all of that. Um, CBN takes money through CRR at zero. And that's why um, banking system liquidity has constantly been um, undulating between um, positive and negative. So again, in, in summary, um, as to how soon this might, you know, peter out, you're looking at are the concerns or are the issues, underlying issues, or are the reasons why CBN is doing this, are the reasons out of, out of um, are we out of the woods with respect to that yet? So the answer is no. So um, it's not unlikely um, that we'll see this Peter very soon. CBN might continue to use this means. And the, not to forget as well, all the intervention funds going into different sectors of the economy would definitely be coming from somewhere on the CBN's balance sheets. I would believe these are the funds again that CBN is piling into that. Um, so again, near term, uh, we don't see that slowing down. Obviously, the banks will start making stronger noise at some point, but we've heard them make this noise, you know, as way back as a year and all of that, but nothing seems to have changed. So as CBN continues to manage FX situation, continues to find a way to also manage inflation situation, we would most likely continue to see banks being debited for CR and system liquidity remaining between um, these tight periods. And again, um, sometimes where they get a minor breather. Uh, I believe that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you very much, Dapo. I see that we know we have no other question for us today. If we have any question during the day, we encourage you to send um, your questions to us at researchadvertiva.com and we'll send responses out to uh, you. We thank everyone for joining us in this session today. We hope that you have a productive day ahead and we also hope to see you at the same time tomorrow. Thank you for joining. Good morning. <laughs>